Good Neighbors, Accounts of the Fairy Folk of Ireland. There was a girl used to be away with them. You'd never know when it was she herself that was in it, or not till she'd come back, and then she'd tell she had been away. She didn't like to go, but she had to go when they called to her. And she told her mother always to treat kindly whoever was put in her place. Sometimes one would be put, and sometimes another, for she'd say, if you are unkind to whoever's there, they'll be unkind to me. My cousin Mary, that lives in the village beyond, told me that she was coming home yesterday week along the road, and she as a girl would not be afraid to walk the whole way with herself. And it was late, and suddenly there was a man walking beside her, inside the field, on the other side of the wall. And at first she was frightened, and then she felt sure it was her cousin John that was dying. And then she wasn't afraid, for she knew her cousin would do her no harm. And after a while he was gone, and when she got near home and saw the light she was frightened. And when she got into the house she was in a sort of a faint, and next day, this day week, her cousin was dead. It's very weak I am, and took to my bed since yesterday. They changed now out of where they were near the castle, and it's inside cool domain they are. It was an old man told me that. I met him on the road there below. First I thought he was a young man, and then I saw he was not, and he grew very nice looking after and he had plaid clothes. We're moved out of that now, he said, and it's strangers will be coming in it. And you ought to know me, he said. And when I looked at him, I thought I did. And one day I was down in Cool, I saw their house, more like a big dairy, with red tiles and a high chimney and a lot of smoke out of it. And there was a woman at the door, and two or three outside. But they'll do you no harm, for the man told me so. They needn't be afraid, he said. We're good neighbors. But let them not say too much if the milk might go from the cows now and again. I was over beyond Rahim one time, and I saw a woman milking, and she at the wrong side of the cow. And when she saw me, she got up, and she had a bucket that was like a plate, and it full of milk, and she gave it to a man that was sitting there. I thought first was one of the O'Hays, and they went away. And the cow was a grand fine one, but who it belonged to I didn't know, maybe to themselves. This is a very stream we're passing. There are some who used to see them by the side of it, and washing themselves in it. And there used to be heard a fairy forge here every night, and the hammering of the iron could be heard, and the blast of the furnace. There is a fairy hill beyond there in the mountain, and some have seen fires in the hole through the night. And one time the police were out there still hunting, and ahead of them, one Rogers, was in the middle of that place, and there he died. No one could say how, though some of his men were round about him. There's a nice, flat, clean place that rock were passing. That's the sort of place they'd be seen dancing or having their play. There was an old man died, and after three days he appeared in the cradle as a baby. They know him by an old look on his face, and his face being long and other things. An old woman that came into the house saw him, and she said, He won't be with you long. He had three deaths to die, and this is the second. And sure enough, he died at the end of six years. There was a woman in Ballinamore, died after the baby being born. And the husband took another wife, and she very young, 
that everyone wondered she'd like to go into the house. And every night, the first wife came to the loft and looked down at her baby, and they couldn't see her. But they'd know she was there by the child looking up and smiling at her. So at last someone said that if they'd go up in the loft after the cock crowing three times they'd see her. And so they did, and there she was, with her own dress on, a plaid shawl she had brought from America, and a cotton skirt with some edging at the bottom. So they went to the priest, and he said mass in the house, and they didn't see so much of her after that. But after a year, the new wife had a baby. And one day she bid the first child to rock the cradle. But when she sat down to it, a sort of a sickness came over her, and she could do nothing. And the same thing always happened, for her mother didn't like to see her carrying the second wife's baby. And one day, the wife, herself, fell in the fire and got a great many burns. They said that it was she did it. So they went to the Blessed Well, Tober Macdur, near Kinvara, and they were told to go there every Friday for twelve weeks. And they said seven prayers and gathered seven stones every time. And since then she doesn't come to the house. But the little girl goes out and meets her mother at a fairy bush. And sometimes she speaks to her there, and sometimes in her dreams. But no one else but her own little girl has seen her of late. I would hardly believe they'd take the old, but we can't know what they might want of them. And it's well to have a friend among them, and it always said you have no right to fret if your children die for it's well to have them there before you. And when a person is dying, the friends and the others will often come about the house and will give a great challenge for him. They don't want cross people, and they won't take you if you say so much as one cross word. It's only the good and the pious they want. Now isn't that very good of them? Another night I was out and the moon shining. I knew by the look of it the night was near worn away. And when I came to the corner of the road beyond, my flesh began to shake and my hair rose up. And every hair was as stiff as that stick. So I knew that some evil thing was near, and I got home again. This island is as thick as grass with them, or as sand. But good neighbors make good neighbors. And no woman minding a house, but should put a couple of the first of the potatoes aside on the dresser. For there's no house but they'll visit it some time or other. Myself, I always brush out my little tent clean of a night before I lie down. And the night I'd do it most would be a rough night. How do we know what poor soul might want to come in? Dreams we should not pay too much attention to. And we should judge them well, that is. If a dream is bad or good, we should say, it's a good dream. And we should never tell a dream to anyone fasting. And it's said if you tell your dream to a tree fasting, it will wither up. And it's better to dream of a person's downfall than of him being up. When the good people take a cow or the like, you'll know if they did it by there being no fat on what's left in its place, and no eyes in it. When my own Springer died so sudden this year, I was afraid to use it. But Pat Hanoviner said, It's a fool you are, and it might save you the price of a bag of meal to feed the bonnocks with a bit of it. And he brought the cart and brought it home to me. So I put down a bit to boil for the bonnocks to try it, for I heard that if it was their work, it would go to water. But there was fat rising to the top, that I have enough in the shed to grease the cartwheels for a year, so then I salted a bit of it down. If they take anyone with them, yourself or myself it might be, they'll put some old spent man in its place, that they had with them a long time, and the father and the mother and the children will think it is the child or the father or the mother that is in it, and so it may be he'd get absolution. 
But as for the old fairies that were there from the beginning, I don't know about them. It's said that if we know how to be neighbourly with them, they'd be neighbourly and friendly with us. It said it was they brought away the potatoes in the bad time, when all the potatoes turned black. But it wasn't for spite, it was because they wanted them themselves. <laughs>